Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, Master's Degree Programs, Master of Science in Food Safety and Quality Management, MSCFSQM, MVP002 Food Laws and Standards, including supplementary material on FSSA, Block 1 Indian Food Regulatory Regime, Unit 1 Prevention of Foods Adulteration Act Rules. 1.0 Objectives. After going through the unit, you will be able to understand the background behind the enactment of food legislation in India, the provisions of the Prevention of Food Adulteration, PFA, Act and rules made there. Under. Effectively deal with the issues of food safety, hygiene and fair trade practices, and ensure adherence to the hygiene and safety norms prescribed. 1.1 Introduction. Foodborne illnesses are common in all parts of the world, and extract an enormous toll in terms of human suffering. Therefore, legislation providing for food safety assumes greater importance, nationally and internationally. In India, the laws regulating quality of food have been in force. Since 1899, until 1954, several provinces, before independence, and states, after independence have formulated their own food laws but there was considerable variance in the rules and specifications of the food which interfered with interprovincial trade. To quote, a few of them as detailed below. 1. Assam Pure Food Act, 1932. 2. Bengal Food Adulteration Act 1919 and amendments made there under. 3. The Orissa Prevention of Food Adulteration Act 1919 and amendments made there under. 4. The Bihar Prevention of Food Adulteration Act 1948. 5. The Bombay Prevention of Adulteration Act 1925 and amendments made there under. 6. The Calcutta Municipal Act 1923. 7. The Central Provinces Prevention of Adulteration Act 1919. 8. The Madras Prevention of Adulteration Act 1919. 9. The Orissa Prevention of Adulteration and Control of Sale of Food Act 1938. 10. The Punjab Pure Food Act 1929 extended to Delhi 1950. 11. The United Provinces Prevention of Adulteration Act 1912. 12. The UP Pure Food Act 1950. Under the above acts, different territories were subjected to different laws on the same subject i.e. Different standards of the same food in different states and also liable to different penalties for similar offences and no uniformity in implementation. With the variations of standards, specifications of same food in different states, it was a barrier in the promotion of food trade between different states. As different laws existed in a number of states for the prevention of adulteration of foodstuffs having been passed by concerned states without mutual consultation, they lacked uniformity in standards, punishment, implementation, methods of analysis etc. The need for the enactment of central legislation for the whole country, therefore was very much felt. Further, the Central Advisory Board appointed by the Government of India in 1937 and the Food Adulteration Committee appointed in 1943, reviewed the subject of food adulteration and recommended for the enactment of central legislation. The prevalence of adulteration at large scale and the need to do away with the diversity and loopholes in the state laws aided the emergence of central legislation and paved way for the prevention of food adulteration, PFA. Act, 1954. The Constitution of India conferred powers upon the central, government for making such legislation as the subject of food and drugs adulteration are included in the concurrent list in the seventh schedule of the Constitution. The Government of India thus enacted the central legislation called the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act, PFA, in 1954, and it came into force with effect from 15 June 1955. This act superseded all the state-level laws then in force concerning food adulteration. This legislation was intended to ensure pure and wholesome food to the consumers and also to prevent fraud or deception. The Act has been amended thrice in 1964, 1976 and in 1986 with the objective of plugging the loopholes and making the punishments more stringent and empowering consumers and voluntary organizations to play more effective role in its implementation. 
There has not been any amendment in the Act since 1986 though rules and specifications of various foods have been amended from time to time in respect of use of additives and their maximum levels of use, maximum levels of prevention of residues ETC to harmonize with the International Law Codex. 1.2 Enforcement of the Food Adulteration, PFA. ACT 1954. Though the subject prevention of food adulteration is in the concurrent list of the Constitution, in practice, the enforcement of the Act is done by the state, U.T. governments. In India, a three-tier system is in force for ensuring food quality and food safety. They are Government of India, State, U.T. governments, Local bodies. The central government primarily plays an advisory role in its implementation besides carrying out various statutory functions, duties assigned to it under the various provisions of the Act. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare is responsible for ensuring safe food to the consumers. 1.2.1 Role of Central Government, PFA Cell The Prevention of Food and Adulteration Act is a central legislation. The rules and standards framed under the Act are uniformly applicable throughout the country. Besides, framing of rules and standards, the following activities are also undertaken by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. To keep close liaison with states, local bodies for uniform implementation of food laws. To monitor the activities of states by collecting periodical reports on working of food laws, getting the reports of food poisoning cases and visiting the states from time to time. To arrange periodical training program for senior officers, inspectors, analysts. To create consumers awareness about the program by holding workshop, exhibitions, seminars, training programs and publishing pamphlets. To approve labels of proprietary food in the category of infant milk substitute and infant food so as to safeguard the health of infants. To coordinate with international bodies like ISO, FAO, WHO and Codex Alimentarius. Commission. To carry out survey come monitoring activities on food additives, physical, chemical and microbiological, contaminants etc. To give administrative, financial, technical support to four central food laboratories. Situated in Kolkata, Ghaziabad, Mysore and Pune and providing technical guidance to the food laboratories set up by states, local bodies. To hold activities connected with national monitoring agency vested with powers to decide policy issues on food fortification, preservations, irradiation etc. To formulate manual of sampling and method of analysis of food. To formulate training materials for food safety systems, GHP, GMP, HACCP, ETC. 1.2.2 Role of State, UT Governments. The enforcement of the food laws are primarily with the states, UTs. As on date, there are states and seven union territories in the country. The implementation of the PFA Act in most of the states is under the administrative control of the Directorate of Health Services, whereas, in few states, the implementation is being combined with the Directorate of Drugs Administration under Joint Food and Drug Administration. The implementation has been left to the administrative setup of the states, but it has been stressed on the states that whatever the structure be, there should be a whole time senior officer duly qualified and experienced in food science, food technology, food analysis with other supporting officers and inspectors. State governments are also empowered to make rules laying down details of licensing conditions of food, the establishments of food industries and prescribing license fees, analysis fees etc. 1.2.3 Role of Local Bodies By and large, in most of the states, the implementation of various provisions of the PFA Act in cooperation, municipal areas rests with the local bodies who employ their own food inspectors and some had established analysis labs. Licensing of food industries, establishments is also left with the states, UTs. 1.3 PFA ACT. PFA Act envisages the elimination, prevention of adulteration of food, which is a menace to public health, and thus eradicate the social evil and ensures providing pure and wholesome food to the public. 
1.3.1 The preamble of the Act was. The term, prevention of adulteration of the food, denotes the policy and object behind the Act. It discloses the primary intention of the legislature, and the provisions of the Act are the key to the mind of the legislature. There are 25 sections in the Act. The Act passed by the Parliament was assented by the President on 29 September 1954 and published as Act No. 37 of 1954 on 30 September 1954 and came into force from 1 June 1955 with A.S. No. 1085 dated 9 May 1955. The Act was first extended to the whole of India except Jammu and Kashmir. It was, however, later extended to the state of Jammu and Kashmir with effect from 26 January 1972 with A. Amendment No. 41 of 1971 and thus is applicable to the whole of India. 1.3.2 Definition. Section 2. This section provides definitions of various terms used in various provisions of the Act. The important definition are, adulterated, central food laboratory, committee, food, food, health, authority, local, health, authority, must brand, primary food, sale, etc. Implications of certain definitions, provisions. The definition of the term, food, is given in section, 2, we, and it excludes drugs and water but, packaged drinking water, is declared as food with a notification GSR 202, A, dated 21 March 2001. As per this definition, food, means any article used as food or drink for human consumption other than drugs and water and includes a, any article which ordinarily enters into or is used in the composition or preparation of human food b any flavoring matter or condiments and c any other article declared by government by notification in official gazette t as food the following clauses need consideration a sub clause m of section 2 i a states that a food is deemed to be adulterated if its quality or purity is not within the prescribed standards but is not injurious to health. However the provision to the sub-clause clearly states that a primary food, produce of agriculture or horticulture in natural form, following below the prescribed standards due to natural causes and beyond the control of human agency, farmer, will not be deemed to be adulterated. In other words, primary food following below the prescribed standards due to natural causes will not be considered adulterated. Does it mean that wheat, item A 18.06.01, containing excessive damaged grains, excessive pesticide residues will not be considered adulterated? A. Chewing tobacco is a food. It is held in the case of Manohar Lalvi, S. State of U.P. Decided by Allahabad High Court Fuck 1991 1, 6 in Kedal Lal and Sansvi, S. State of UP, Allahabad High Court, Fuck 1981 1, 2, 6, 2. B. Certificate of Analysis by Director, Central Food Laboratory, CFL, supersedes the report issued by a public analyst, Section 13, 3. However, Delhi High Court held that where the reports of CFL and public analyst appear to be absolutely divergent and different from each other, then the report of public analyst can be looked into, MCDV, S. Lala Ram, Delhi High Court FAC 1981-147. C. Section 22A empowers the central government to give directions to a state government which shall have to be complied with by the state government. 1.3.3 Primary Food Definition Primary food is an article of food being a produce of agriculture or horticulture in its natural form, if not coming up to the prescribed standards solely due to natural causes and beyond the control of human agency shall not be deemed to be adulterated, provided they are not injurious. For example cereals, whole spices etc. 1.3.4 Kinds of Adulteration Included in the Act 1. Substandard Quality 2. Substitution by Cheaper Substance 3. Abstraction of any constituent of article 4. 
preparation or storage in unsanitary conditions. 5. Poisonous ingredients. 6. Coloring agents and or preservatives in excess of prescribed limits. 7. Quality or purity below the prescribed standards. 8. If the constituents of the article are present in quantities which are not within prescribed limit. 1.3.5 Adulterated food. 1. Milk not conforming to standard is adulterated. Standard required fat and solid content 14%, but the milk contained fat 5.7% and solid 7.25% i.e. total 13%. 2. Excess content of fat than the prescribed level will also amount to adulteration. 3. The knowledge and awareness of the buyer is wholly immaterial as the object of the act is to protect the public. 4. Sale of wheat flour is pure when it contains some mixture of barely, the quantum of admixture is immaterial. 5. The addition of water with milk is adulteration. 6. Sale of mixed linseed and rapeseed oil amounts to sale of adulterated oil. 7. A. Insect infested. Living. Not for human consumption dead. 8. Suji and maida samples containing large number of alive and dead insects are adulterated. 9. Pan masala is food. Tobacco comes under the definition of food. 10. Country liquor comes under the definition of food. A. Food made available in a hotel is food. B. Wheat flour kept in dhaba for preparation of chapatis for sale is food. 1.3.6 articles held as food by courts. 1. Arhar dal. 2. Coconut oil. 3. Country liquor. 4. Fruits. 5. Kota haldi. 6. Gram flour. 7. Groundnut oil. 8. Gunja oil. 9. Gur. 10. Ice fruit. 11. Jaggery. 12. Kesari dal. 13. Mustard oil. 14. Tea flour. 15. Tea. 16. Till oil. 17. Wines liquors. 1.3.7 What is must brand food? An article is considered as mass brand. 1. If an article is an imitation of, or a substitute for another article of food. 2. If it is sold under the name of another article. 3. If the true character of the article is not indicated plainly and conspicuously on the label. 4. If it is sold by a name which belongs to another article of good. 5. Makes false claim for the article on the label or otherwise. 6. If the fact of an article being damaged is concealed through coloring, polishing etc. 7. If the contents of each package are not conspicuously and correctly stated on the outside of the package. 1.4 Functions, Responsibilities of Various Authorities. The Ministry for its implementation consists of 53 members. The composition is as follows. A. Director General Health Services, DGHS, 1, ex officio chairman. B. Directors, Central Food Labs, CFL, 4. C. Experts of Central Government, 2. D. Representative of Department of Food, Agriculture, 7. Commerce, Defense, Industry and Suppliers and Railways. A. Each state, 1. Representative, 28. F. Union Territories, 2. G. Representative to represent agricultural, commercial 3. And industrial interest. H. Consumers interests including 1 from hotel industry 5. I. Indian Council of Medical Research 1. J. Bureau of Indian Standards 1. Total 54. The tenure of a member is 3 years, except chairman and directors of CFL. The members can be renominated. The committee may appoint as many subcommittees as it deems fit and non-CCFS members can be appointed to the subcommittees. The committee is to advise the central and state governments on matters arising out of the administration of the Act. There are nine subcommittees functioning at present. The details of such committees are given as under 1. Subcommittee on Food Laws and Legal Advisory Committee 2. Sub Committee on Food Labeling. 3. Subcommittee on Food Additives and Contaminants. 4. Subcommittee on Milk and Milk Products. 5. 
सब कमिटी ऑन माइक्रोबायोलॉजिकल सिक्स सब कमिटी ऑन ऑयल एंड फैट्स सेवन सब कमिटी ऑन पेस्टिसाइड रेजिज्यूज एट सब कमिटी ऑन न्यूट्रिशन फूड फॉर स्पेशल डायट्री यूजेस फॉर इन्फेंट एंड नाइन सब कमिटी ऑन मेथड्स ऑफ एनालिसिस द कमिटी हैज मेड बाय लॉज कॉल्ड प्रोसीजर एंड ट्रांजेक्शन ऑफ बिजनेस विद द अप्रूवल ऑफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट फॉर इट्स फंक्शनिंग सी एन एक्स वन द कमिटी इज अ रिकमेंडेटरी बॉडी टू द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द एक्ट सेटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स स्पेसिफिकेशंस ऑफ वेरियस फूड स्टफ्स यूज ऑफ एडिटिव एंड देयर मैक्सिमम लेवल्स फैक्सेशन ऑफ मैक्सिमम लेवल्स ऑफ कंटामिनेंट्स फिजिकल केमिकल एंड माइक्रोबायोलॉजिकल टॉक्सिन्स एम आर एल ऑफ पेस्टिसाइड फंक्शनिंग ऑफ वेरियस रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटीज विज सेंट्रल स्टेट एंड लोकल बॉडीज लेबलिंग लाइसेंसिंग ई टी सी द कमिटी हैड फिफ्टी सेवन मीटिंग सिंस इट्स इंस्पेक्शन टिल ऑगस्ट टू थाउजेंड एंड एट वन पॉइंट फाइव सेंट्रल फूड लेबोरेटरीज सेक्शन फोर दिस सेक्शन प्रोवाइड्स फॉर द एस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ सेंट्रल फूड लेबोरेटरीज सी एफ एल एट प्रेजेंट दे आर फोर सच लैब्स वन ईच एट वन कोलकाता एंड टू गाजियाबाद अंडर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट थ्री पब्लिक हेल्थ पी एच लैब पुणे एंड फोर सेंट्रल फूड टेक्नोलॉजिकल रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट सी एफ टी आर आई माइसोर नोटिफाइड एस सी एफ एल फॉर द पर्पसेज ऑफ द एक्ट सी एफ एल आर द अपेलेट लेबोरेटरीज फॉर द फॉलोइंग पर्पसेज वन फॉर द एनालिसिस ऑफ सैम्पल्स रिसीव्ड फ्रॉम कोर्ट्स अंडर सेक्शन थर्टीन टू बी एंड इशू सर्टिफिकेट्स ऑफ एनालिसिस विच सुपरसीड्स द रिपोर्ट ऑफ पब्लिक एनालिस्ट सेक्शन थर्टीन थ्री The jurisdiction of these labs for various areas are specified in Table One of Rule Three Two of PFA Rules Two for the analysis of import products sent by the customs, Section Six Two. The areas in respect of local areas assigned to various labs are provided in Table Two of Rule Three Two of PFA Rules Three for any other matter as considered necessary by central government. Section four two, section five. This section provides for prohibition of imports which are in contravention of law. Section six. This section provides powers to custom officers to detain imported foods prohibited under the law and send samples to central food laboratory. Custom officer solicits the assistance of port health officers and food inspector for sampling purposes. Etc. Section seven. This section prohibits the manufacture. sale or storage of adulterated foods section 8 analysis of foods this section empowers the central government state governments to appoint public analyst having prescribed qualifications rule 6 the primary task of public analysis is to analyze the samples sent by the food inspectors consumer organizations or others as provided in the state rules section 24 on payment of fees or otherwise as provided in the state rules by the state governments the territorial jurisdictions of work of public analysts are prescribed in the state rules 1.6 role of food inspectors 1.6.1 section 9 tenths appointment and powers of food inspectors the section 9 confers powers upon to the central state governments to appoint food inspectors having prescribed qualifications rule 8 The primary responsibility of food inspector is to draw the samples from the manufacturer's premises, markets or other places under their jurisdiction as provided in the state rules for analysis by the public analyst. The food inspector with the approval of local health authority L H A Food Health Authority Fluorine Monohydride Day has the powers to prohibit the sale of an article of food if it appears to be adulterated and to seize and carry away the seized stock or keep it in the custody of vendor under a bond section 10 4 and send part of the sample for analysis by the public analysts the cost of the sample should be paid by the food inspector 10 3 in case the seized article is of perishable in nature and if the local health authority is satisfied that it is unfit for human consumption the authority may destroy the same after giving notice to the vendor section 10 4
The food inspector may seize the books of accounts which are useful and relevant for any investigation, to be returned later, with the approval of his immediate officer. Section 10, 6, and 10, 7a. Food inspector is to call one or more witness while taking sample, section 10, a, uh, or in case. Where an article is seized, section 10, 7. 1.6.2 Section 11 Procedure to be followed by Food Inspector This section provides the procedure to be followed by the Food Inspector for drawing samples. The procedure to be followed are as under. a. Give notice in writing of his intention to have it analyzed to the person from whom he has taken the sample and to the person, if any, whose name and addresses have been disclosed. b. Divide the sample into three parts and mark and seal or fasten up each part in such a manner as its nature permits and take the signature or thumb impression of the person from whom the sample has been taken. c. If the person refuses to sign or put his thumb impression, the food inspector shall call upon one or more witnesses and take their signature or thumb impression, in lieu of the signature or thumb impression of such person. 1. Send one part of the sample to the public analyst under intimation to the local authority. 2. Send remaining two parts to the local, health, authority for further legal action. d. An article of food seized shall be produced before magistrate as soon as possible, but in any in case, not later than seven days after receipt of the report of the public analyst. a. If an application is made to the magistrate by the person from whom the food article has been seized, the magistrate shall by order in writing direct the food inspector to produce the seized article before him within such time as may be specified in order. Food inspector is required to call one or more witness while taking sample if the vendor refuses to sign the wrapper or other documents as required under the Act, Rules, Section 11, 1, B, and Rules 16, C. The food inspector should pay the cost of the sample, Section 10, 3. 1.6.3 Section 12, Power of Purchaser. This section allows a purchaser or a recognized consumer organization to get the sample analyzed by a public analyst on payment of fee and to receive the report of the analysis. The fee is prescribed by the state government as refunded if the sample is adulterated. 1.6.4 Section 13, Report of Analyst. As per this section, the report of public analyst, Prima facie forms the basis for further action by the authorities. The report is sent to local health authority, who shall forward a copy of the report to the vendor and to the manufacturers, distributors, dealer who has supplied the material to the vendor under warranty, Section 14A. As per Section 13, 2, the court has power to call for the part of the sample from local, health, authority, if so desired by the manufacturer, distributor, Dealer for getting it analyzed by Central Food Laboratory and after ascertaining the intactness of the seals, send the same to Central Food Laboratory for final opinion which supersedes the public analyst report, Section 13, 3. 1.6.5 Section 14, Issue of Warranty. This section provides that a manufacturer, distributor or dealer has to give a warranty in writing to the vendor, which stands as a defense to vendor in case the same is declared adulterated, Section 19, a cash memo, bill is considered as a warranty. 1.6.6 Section 15 Report of Food Poisoning. As per this section, the central, state governments may require medical practitioners to report cases of food poisoning in their areas of jurisdiction. 1.7 Penalties, Section 16. The section 16 deals with the penalties as detailed below. Offenses. Adulterated but not injurious and not within prescribed specifications. Misbrand. Non-injurious adulterant. Preventing a food inspector from drawing sampling or in exercise of his duties. Use of report of public analyst, CFL for. Advertisement, providing false warranty ETC. Penalties. Minimum imprisonment of 6 months, extending to 3 years and fine not less than 1000 rupees. Offense. Primary food adulterated by human agency, but of non-injurious nature, or improper. Labeling, licensing condition etc. Penalties. 
imprisonment of not less than three months, extending to two years and fine not less than 500 rupees. Adulterated, injurious nature, clause A to L of section 2 IA. Imprisonment not less than one year and extending to six years and fine of not less than 2000 rupees. In case of death, grievous injury. Imprisonment of not less than three years, extending to life and fine not less than as 5000. Tampering commodity kept under the custody of vendor with a section 10, 4. Imprisonment of not less than six months, extending to two years and fine not less than 1000 rupees. Tampering commodity kept under the custody of vendor and of injurious nature, likely to cause death. Imprisonment of not less than three years, extending to life and fine not less than 5000 rupees. Not providing warranty, section 14, or not disclosing name of manufacturer, section 14a. Imprisonment up to six months and fine not less than 5 rupees, 00. Repeat of offense. Cancellation of license. Subsequent offense. Offender's name in place to be published. Section 16a. Summary trials. This section provides summary trials by judicial magistrates of first class or metropolitan magistrate who can pass maximum imprisonment of one year. Magistrate has powers to try cases other than summary trials if he is of the opinion that the punishment higher than one year is to be passed. Section 17. Nomination by company. As per this section, the companies can nominate a person responsible for the company's business and inform local health authority of such nominations with the nominee's written consent. The person so nominated is to inform local health authority for cancelling his nomination when he leaves the company or otherwise under intimation to the company. The nominee stands responsible for any offence committed by the company. Section 18. Forfeiture. As per this section the articles of food, contravening the law, can be forfeited by the concerned authorities. However, the court can allow reprocessing of such food articles under the supervision of some officer if the same can be made to conform to the standards prescribed under law. Section 19. A warranty under Section 14 from a licensed vendor stands as a defense in as a case of prosecution, as per Section 19. Section 20. Cognizance of offense. This section stipulates that a prosecution can be launched with the written consent of a person authorized by central, state government except in case of warranty, section 1414c. However, a purchaser, section 12, can directly make a complaint to the court with a copy of the report of public analyst. A purchaser or recognized consumer associations, section 12, may also institute a prosecution in a court with copy of the report of the public analyst along with the complaint. Section 20A. Impleading manufacturer. As per Section 20A, a manufacturer, distributor or dealer can be impleaded on the evidence adduced before the court if such person is also connected with the commission of the offence. Section 21. Power of magistrate. The Section 21 clearly stipulates that only the first class magistrate or metropolitan magistrate can pass any sentence under this Act except life imprisonment or more than six years imprisonment. Section 22. Protection to government officers if action is taken in good faith. As per this section, legal proceedings can't not be initiated against government officers if the action is taken in food faith. What is done in, good faith, the term, good faith, is defined in the General Clauses Act. X of 1897, under Section 3, 22. As per this section, a thing shall be deemed to be done in, good faith, where it is in fact done honestly, regardless of the fact whether it is done, negligently or not, Section 52 of Indian Penal Code under describes action taken in good faith as, Nothing is said to be done or believed in, good faith, which is done or believed without due care and attention. The word, due care and attention, means that a person has to show not only that he had good intention but also exercised such care and skill as the duty reasonably demanded for its due discharge. Section 22a, direction by central government to be complied with, as per this section, 
The direction given by central government to state governments should be complied with by state government. Section 23. Powers of central government to make rules. 1. Defining standards of quality. The rules, Appendix B, provide in detail the standards of a product in relation to quality parameters like fat content in different classes of milk or milk products, ingredients to be used in different categories of food e.g. use of additives like colors, preservatives, antioxidants, artificial sweeteners etc. and their maximum levels of use, the requirements of nutrients in certain food with infant food, infant milk substitutes characteristics to detect adulteration, minimum juice content in fruit drinks etc. 2. To impose conditions for manufacture, distribution, sale, and registration of premises. Conditions for sale, licenses etc. Part 9, Rules 49, 50, 51. 3. To prescribe conditions of packaging, labeling including nutritional labeling, or special labeling provisions in case of fortified food etc. Rule 32 to 43. 4. Qualifications, powers and duties of food inspectors and public analysts, rules. 6 to 9. 5. To define infrastructure for laboratories where samples can be analyzed. Recognition of labs having necessary infrastructure for analytical purposes. 6. To restrict use of certain ingredients etc. 7. To prescribe licensing conditions for import of foods, to check the quality of imports to ensure, verify that such imports conform to PFA Act, rules etc. 8. Procedure of drawing and dispatch of samples by a food inspector. 9. To provide methods of analysis for guidance of a public analyst. 10. To provide exemption to any article from provisions of the Act, rules subject to any conditions deemed necessary. 11. To provide procedure of destruction etc. in case so ordered by the central government or an authorized officer. 12. Any other action necessary to carry out the provisions of the Act. The rules under this Act are made with prior consultation of CCFS and previous publication in the official Gazette. The rules so made are to be placed before each House of Parliament within time period as prescribed in the Act, 30 days at present. However, prior consultation with CCFS can be dispensed with if matter is of urgent nature but committee to be consulted within a period of 6 months. 1.8 Powers of the State GOVERNENTS Section 24 Powers of State Governments this section empowers the state governments to frame rules and regulations after consultation with CCFS and previous publications, for the following purposes. 1. Defining powers, jurisdictions and duties of food, health, authority and local health, authority. 2. Form, fees and conditions for licenses for manufacture, storage, sale, and distribution of articles of food. 3. Fees for analysis, apportionment, distribution, of fines between local authorities and others. 4. Delegation of powers to subordinate authorities by food, health, authority. 5. Rules made by state government to be laid before state legislatures. Section 25. As per Section 25, all corresponding laws, acts in force in states, union territories stand repealed. 1.9 Discussion on Amendments to PFA ACT and Rules The PFA Act has been amended thrice in 1964, 1976 and 1986 which inter alia provided the following. 1. Stringent penalties, a minimum of 6 months imprisonment for non-injurious adulteration to a maximum of life imprisonments in case of grievous injury, death has been prescribed under the Act. 2. By way of an amendment, a middle-level officer has been designated as local, health, authority, as in charge of administration for local areas so notified by the state governments. 3. Powers have been conferred up on the consumer organizations to draw samples and receive reports of analysis from the public analyst for further action. 4. Provision for summary trial has been made. 5. 
The central government has been vested with the power to give directions to state governments. 6. A defense to the vendor has been provided in an adulterated case, if he can produce letter of warranty, from a manufacturer, distributor or dealer, and prove that it was properly stored while in his possession and sold it in the same condition as he purchased it. 1.9.1 Prevention of Food Adulteration, PFA, Rules the PFA rules provide standards of about 250 articles of food which are of mass consumption. Over 350 amendments have been made since its inception with the objective of updating its standards ETC with the latest advancement in technologies and in harmonization with codex standards, guidelines, codes practices ETC. The use of additives as per codex recommendations are constantly reviewed by CCFS to make domestic food compatible to imports. The details of various appendix are as below. Appendix A. Forms. Appendix B. Definitions and standards of quality for various foods. Appendix C. 15 tables listing use of additives in various foods. Appendix D. 3 tables providing microbiological requirements of various foods. 1.10 shortcomings, inadequacies if any. In addition to PFA Act and rules made there under, there are other acts and rules which also formulated and implemented the standards of similar commodities under the those laws. A few of such examples are given below. Ministry and Act, Rules. Ministry of Food Processing Industry, Fruit Product Order 1955, FPO, under Essential Commodities Act, 1953, Meat Food Products Order 1973, MFPO, Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution Consumer Protection Act 1986, Standards of Weights and Measures, Act 1976, Rules 1977, Bureau of Indian Standards Act 1986, Vegetables Oils Product Order 1998, under Essential Commodities Act 1953, Ministry of Agriculture, Department of Animal Husbandry, Dairying and Fisheries, Agriculture Produce, Grading and Marketing Act 1937, AGMARK, Various orders issued under Essential Commodities Act such as Milk and Milk Products, Control, Order 1992, Edible Oils Packaging Order 1998, Solvent Extracted Oils, Deoiled Meal and Edible Flour Order, 1973, SEO. Ministry of Environment, Environment Protection Act 1986. Ministry of Human Resources Development, Women and Child Welfare Development, Infant Milk Substitutes, Feeding Bottles and Infant Foods, Regulation of Production, Supply and Distribution, Act 1992 and Rules 1993. Ministry of Commerce, the Export, Quality Control and Inspection, Act 1963. There were variations in specifications of similar food products in the above cited acts, orders, rules and regulations. Example, PFA rules permit the use of artificial sweetener in certain food products while fruit products order does not allow the same. The Packages Commodity Rules, PCR, Schedule, 3. Under Standards of Weights and Measures Act 1976 provides certain commodities to be packed in specified sizes while the PFA Act does not have such restrictions. There are many such other variations. A need was felt to provide an integrated comprehensive legislation under one authority which will regulate manufacture, storage, distribution and sale and provide hygienic conditions to ensure availability of safe and wholesome food for human consumption and provide fair trade in food as a self-regulation by the industry and trade. The large number of cases pending over 61,000 till 1996 in courts also demanded a quick judicial system which will dispose of the disputes quickly. Keeping in view the widespread prevalence of food adulteration and multiple agencies. Involved to control such malpractices and in view of the concept note of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, while proposing PFA, Amendment, Bill 2002, it was observed as under. The cases pending in various courts of the country was 28,364 at the end of the year 1981. Whereas at the end of the year 1996, 
the pendency has gone up to 61,019. The note is suggestive of the view that the concept of minimum punishment of six months imprisonment, since 1976 amendment, has also become an indirect factor causing delay and the current scheme of enforcement has not fulfilled the purpose, hence, some substantial changes are necessary. They suggested the need for settling down the time limit for investigation so that the period should not exceed six months. To shift to promotion of GMP and in-process control concepts such as HACCP thus making the standards more safety-oriented based on science. Launching of education programs for consumer and small food markets and street vendors including enforcement staff ETC. The government thus formulated an integrated food law which was passed by the parliament and assented by the president on 23 August 2006. The title of the act is called, the Food Safety and Standards Act 2006. It is believed that this act will remove the difficulties encountered in the implementation of the present act and provide a single agency to deal with all aspects of food safety and quality. The Ministry of Health as the nodal ministry for implementation of the said act. Comments. To be filled by Prof. Saluja about this act. 1.11 Harmonization of PFA ACT with Codex. After signing Sanitary and Phytosanitary, SPS, and Technical Barrier to Trade, TBT, agreements by India under WTO regime and removal of quantitative restriction on import of food products into India, the exercise of harmonization of standards for food products, use of food additives, microbiological requirements, harmonization of regulations, in line with international standards prescribed by Codex Alimentarius. Commission and International Organization of Standards, ISO, will be a major task before the Food Safety and Standards Authority. The work on the same has already received the attention of the authorities. India has been an active member of the Codex and has been attending regularly the various sessions of Codex Alimentarius Commission and its Codex General Subjects, Commodity Committees to put forward its views in the standard setting procedures. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare which is the nodal authority for the Administration of Food Safety and Standards Act is also designated as National Codex Contact Point in India to examine and formulate India's views on agenda for the various meeting of Codex Alimentarius Commission, a joint venture of FAO, WHO dealing with international food standards, and its subsidiary committees. As such India will be in a position to place before the international standard setting body, Codex, its views whenever the developed countries suggest stringent standards than what are necessary for appropriate level of protection, ALOP. 1.12 Summary The PFA Act paved the way for central legislation in 1954, thus replacing the state laws which lacked uniformity in the specifications and also in implementations. During its period of over 50 years enforcement, amendments were carried to provide stringent punishment, summary trials and powers to consumer organizations for drawing of samples. However in the process of development of food industry, multiple agencies, Department of Central Government formulated laws in parallel dealing with particular food sector like fruits and vegetables, dairy products, infant foods etc., which are at variance in quality and other parameters etc. Hence a need was felt for an integrated act which paved the way for the passage, Food Safety and Standards Act 2006. Thank you, subscribe to our channel for more updates, and we will see you with the next chapter.